What is going on, Internet? Another video coming at you from the Washington Football Report. This is JD. Let's dive right into this. So I accidentally posted the video yesterday, and I didn't realize it didn't have sound. Um, so that's fun. Um, that's my car shutting off. I'm not on a roller coaster or nothing. A um, couple things I want to go over, and a lot of news dropped yesterday. Uh, first thing is Alex Smith. It didn't drop yesterday. It's dropped this weekend. But Alex Smith was cut this weekend. And I, I actually caught, I had made a whole 15-minute long video on this. And come to find out, I had no sound. So I'm, re I'm recording this. The microphone is definitely on right now. I can see it. So um, I'm going to comment on Alex Smith. Um, Alex Smith uh, got cut, um, which most of us knew he was going to get cut. Wasn't surprised anyone. Uh, he just wasn't worth the money um, that he was owed or that was on the contract. He was owed $24, 25000000 million this year. Cutting him saved us 14.7, 14.9 million, which we can allocate towards other other resources on the team. This is a year where it's a, a shortened salary cap, um, so Washington can can bank on getting some good players this year and kind of load up for for one year on some cheaper deals for players that they can afford that no one else can afford. There's a lot of teams that are in negative cap space. Um, I'm not going to go into do too much depth on Alex Smith. I don't, I'll, I'm going to comment on his GQ comments. Um, I think people are blowing that way out of proportion. I'm going to be bluntly honest. And, and it kind of annoys me that we as a society want our athletes and our celebrities to be honest, but then when they're honest about how they really feel, if it doesn't m fit with what we really, really want, we get angry about it. And we want to, it's cancel culture at its finest. If someone hasn't said something that we don't like, or we agree with, instead of just being like, you know what? They're entitled to their opinion. I'm entitled to mine. Whatever, we want to like not have them exist anymore. It's like it's 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 not trying to get political. It's pure fascism at its finest. When you don't want someone else's opinion to even be spoken, that's that's just what it is. And, and this isn't exactly that. This is just people mad that he uh, he didn't he did he wasn't grateful and stuff like. Listen, the guy broke his leg. He had 17 surgeries, 17 plus surgeries to repair that leg, and then he worked out and battled himself back. Um, had to work at, had to go to a military facility. Cause that's how bad the injury was where guys like have injuries from like IEDs and stuff. And he battled back and it, it, and he's just telling how he felt in the moment. I don't think it's how he truly feels. I think he's strictly telling how he felt in the moment. Okay. In the moment in which he came back and he was cleared by the doctors to play. He felt like, like the Washington football team was trying to push him out, try not to let him play. Whether that's because they didn't want him or whether that's because, you know, for his own safety, they were just trying to look out for him. There could be many different reasons as to why. But he is just telling how he felt in that moment. He felt that Washington didn't want him there. He felt that he wasn't part of the plan. And if you look at it and look at it, like, logically, it, he wasn't. Because Washington had already had three quarterbacks on top of, like, getting him. The first quarterback they had, Dwayne Haskins, who was a bust, but Dwayne Haskins. Second quarterback, uh, uh, Kyle Allen. Third was Steven Montez. And then it was Alex Smith. And if you want to get technical, Taylor Heineke at one point. So they had five quarterbacks on this roster this year. And they had five quarterbacks on the roster. And Alex Smith probably what initially wasn't the plan. The plan was to give Dwayne Haskins a shot. And then Kyle Allen, if he if he sucked, Kyle Allen will take over. If he didn't, Kyle Allen would just be a backup. And Dwayne Haskins would be going forward. And Alex Smith was never going to be truly an option at quarterback. Now, he says he never got an opportunity to start. He says it was an open competition. It was never an open competition. That or Ron Rivera is admitted to that. So, that and he, that I, Alex Smith is just being candid and being honest with you as the fan base about what he felt in the process. I don't hold it against him. I, I don't have any less opinion of him now than he did. Actually, I feel better about him now because I know he's more – he always seems to always say the right thing, and this is like – uh, and I think it's just because that's just how he truly feels. He feels the right way about everything. But this is just how he felt. And for the first time ever, he, like, cussed. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm not going to get into the details of everything he said, like, verbatim. All I know is that all he was just being honest about how he felt in the situation. And I'm not going to knock the guy for that. Um, I'm going to thank the guy for the time he spent in Washington. As a starter, he was 11-4. Um, as a starter. Okay, that's on the outside. Um, he's 11 and four as a starter. Uh, and I, I much appreciate that. Um, he should not go in the ring of fame. Um, that's just not even a question on mine. He has a high winning percentage. Yes, but he got injured. Um, 
he, he's a great leader of men. I'll give him that. And I really wish him best. I hope he goes to the Bears and wins a, a freaking Super Bowl. I really do. I hope he goes somewhere and has success and gets what he truly deserves. I think the guy's a character guy. If more players in the NFL are like him when it comes to their character, I think the NFL will be a much better product to watch overall. Um, so let's move on to the next topic. Um, I'm going to go over this for two seconds. Actually, no, I'm going to go back for a second. Um, and I'm not going to talk about uh, – I had one. Where was it? No, okay. I don't have a, a graphic for that, so I'll just talk about it. Dak Prescott was signed. Um, $160 million over four years. One of those years, it gets paid $75 million. Um, all I got to say is I think, I, think, I think Dallas has just kind of like screwed themselves out of winning um, their division for a long time. Because I don't dislike Dak. I didn't think he was a bad quarterback, but he is not worth Patrick Mahomes' money. He's not. Um, he, if he thinks he's worth Patrick Mahomes' money, he better live up to that. He hasn't even won a playoff game yet, and he thinks he's worth Patrick Mahomes' money. Like you got to be, you got to be kidding me. Like Lamar Jackson is going to be worth Patrick Mahomes' money because Lamar Jackson runs, passes, and gets teams to the playoffs, and he's eleven and five minimum every year he starts. Okay, he does all those things. But you're going to sit here and tell me that you know Dak Prescott who had, I, I don't know, I did a video saying I wouldn't mind if Washington got him. Yeah, because Washington, if they had a if they have a decent quarterback and just get the job, that would just be decent, they're going to be okay because they have a good defense, they can run the ball, they have decent weapons that are passing. Dallas is all they can rely on is passing. So it's like Dak or bust, so they have to put so much, no pun intended, weight on, pressure on him, put, jump on his back, whatever. And if he doesn't play well, they, they lose. So he's going to be under immense pressure. He has, I don't understand why he wanted to go back to Dallas. That much money, there's going to be no defense on that team. There's no way they can they can keep all the players they have on that team, all the talent that they have. There's no way they're going to be able to pay Amari Cooper, Ezekiel Elliott, and Dak Prescott and put together a decent defense. It, it's not possible. They're going to have so many rookie contracts that are going to expire and players are going to leave. It's, it's, it's going to be fun to watch that just train wreck happen. Um, I'm going to skip over to two more. Brandon Sheriff got, got a franchise tag. <clears throat> so if you watched any of my videos in the past, last year, I said Washington just needs to franchise tag him and then let him go next year. That's what I said last year. And the reason why I said that is Brandon Sheriff is, I believe he's 31 right now. You don't give people contracts in their 30s that are four or five years long because they're not going to live up to that contract. He's, he's never had a complete season to begin with. This year was one of his first full seasons. Now, don't get me wrong. He's all pro, and he's good. Okay? That's why I wouldn't mind, like, a short three-year, like, $32 million contract where he gets, like, $60 million a year or something. But franchise tag, and I don't like the franchise tag right now for a couple reasons. One, it's $18.9 million. So he's getting almost $19 million just to be a guard when PFS rating grades him at costing about $12.9 million. Now, Washington tagged him last year at like $14.5 million. <clears throat> so my thought process is he's worth about $14.5 million. That's what Washington's willing to pay him. That's what he's worth every year. So I'd have been okay with, you know, two-year $30 million, like round up to $15 million a year. He's been good. He's been a, he's been a good uh, – when he's played, he's been a good player. Okay. Um, but basically what this tells me is Washington after this season will move on from Brandon Sheriff. They're not going to give him a contract extension. They're not going to franchise tag him a third time because the cost he's going to cost over 20 million and you don't pay $20 million for a guard. Um, they're, if, if after this season, he's gone, they're going to move on from him or they're going to get him on a cheap deal. I think what they, I think what they hope for, and this is not me saying I want this, what I really think Washington not hoping for, but I think they're going to, Maybe gets injured, and so he can take a lesser amount, like ten million a year or something, over the next over like after this year, like ten million a year for three years, so that he's not breaking the bank, but they still have a good player. <clears throat> I I just I see the writing was on the wall. They're not they're not keeping him after this year unless it's on like a cheap deal, and I don't think Brandon Sheriff is going to take a cheap deal. Um, he's a first round pick. Um, he's played good soldier for Washington for years. Um, he's been a solid player, but you, you don't give long contracts of high extor exorbitant amounts of dollars when players are in their thirties. You just don't do that. Um, and that's the thing about Jaren and Sheriff right now is he, he's, he's in his thirties and you're not going to give him a contract till he's like, you know, 40 cause lime linemen don't last that long. Um, it's possible. 
it's definitely possible that uh, Washington could go the route of, you know, signing them next year. Maybe they just couldn't get a deal done. Um, and Washington's like, you know what, we're just going to franchise tag you. Um, we'll work on a contract later, whatever. I just don't think it's going to happen. I really don't. Um, so that's the news on Brandon Sheriff. And I, I expect us to draft a guard, not this year, but probably next year in the draft. Um, we have guys replaced on the offensive line. Cornelius Lucas did okay last year. He's probably going to he's probably going to start this year again. He's going to be okay. Wes Schweitzer is okay, but he's not a long term solution. Um, uh, Chase Rulli is a long term solution. Brandon Sheriff could be a long term solution, but we won't, we just refuse to give him a long contract. And then we have Morgan Moses, who had a good year last year. I'm not going to take that away from him, <clears throat> but we need I need we need consecutive good years out of Brandon or Morgan Moses for I'm comfortable. I'm um, keeping them long term. Now, I want to talk about one more thing. I did a poll on uh, the website I've been talking about for a while. Um, uh, not a website; it's an app. It's called Sided, where uh, you can actually post a poll and people can answer the poll. And the question was, who should Washington get at quarterback? I think Sam Darnold is a steal. Give him real talent and leadership; he will thrive. Who do you got? And I have a couple options here. Sam Darnold was one. Marcus Mariota, Jameis Winston, trade up for someone. Which, and then there's one, uh, the one before it was uh, just go with who we have. And I think I had one vote for that. But the rest of these. So after about a week or three days of post, I should have let it go for a week, but three days. A lot of people think Sam Darnold, about 40% of people think Sam Darnold should be the solution. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to, uh, now that Dak Prescott's off the table, I think we got to get realistic. We got to really get our nose to the grind to get a quarterback. And I, I don't want to be the last one standing. I don't want to be the one standing that has to take Kyle Trask or Mac Jones in, in the draft. And we're stuck with a quarterback that's mediocre, who has already hit their ceiling, things like that. You may think, you may think higher of Mac Jones than me. I don't think Mac Jones is very well, very good. I know his receivers have said he's better than Tua. I think that's that's little, I think a little bit more is a little bit more the college game than there is the pro game. I think that Mac Jones is better at the college game than than Tua was. Um, I don't think Tua is very good either. But I you got to understand that Alabama has a combination of talent. They have the best talent combination you're going to have when it comes to college football. Is why I, I hate Alabama. Everyone's always be like, oh, they win national titles. They should. They have the best freaking players every year. Okay, they should win national titles. If they don't win national titles, shame on them. They're overrated and they're pieces of crap. That's that's what it comes down to for me. Okay, so when you have a quarterback, Mac Jones, and you're playing with three top fifty draft picks, one of receivers, and you have two or three of your linemen are top uh, fifty draft picks, you're going to do well. You're going to succeed. You're going to have be successful, and you're going to look good. It's the same thing I say, and this is and if people get mad at this. What I what I say this. I do not want to ever draft a quarterback from Ohio State ever again. Um every quarterback that comes out of Ohio State is completely overrated to me. Justin Fields, I know, looks like he might be a different different mold, but I I'm not taking that chance. Quarterbacks who come out of Ohio State are not very good. They have a bad track record. They, Ohio State is good at getting talent at the receiving and running back position, and they do that, and it takes a lot of pressure off their quarterbacks, and it makes their quarterbacks look way better. Torrey Smith won a Heisman at quarterback at the University or uh, Ohio State, and he didn't. I don't think he played one snap as a quarterback in the NFL. Okay, but he had extremely good talent around him. He had a good running game, all those things. Okay, I think it's the same thing with Mac Jones. I think Mac Jones, and even I think two was the same way. Both of them are products of what was around them in college. Now I think Mac Jones's game plays better in college. Um, look at Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow, and Mac Jones are very similar players. Joe Burrow, very accurate passer, uh, very clean, very precise passing. And he did that because he had extremely good talent um, on his roster, and he was able to, you know, be successful with that. So, um, I don't like Mac Jones, uh, Kyle Trask. If we get him like late second, maybe I, I consider a third round. 
But I just don't. I like Sam Darnold. I think Washington needs to pull that uh, pull that trigger. Don't waste draft picks on trading up and getting a rookie. We have nothing nothing about. We can do that next year if we need to. Trade trade a third, trade a second, whatever you gotta do. Trade a second next year for God's sakes and get Sam Darnold. This is JD. This is Washington Football Report. Uh, hail to the Redskins. See ya.